I'm Chris Wallace. House Speaker John Boehner charges President Obama with abusing his executive power and plans to sue him. I believe uh, the president is not faithfully executing the laws of, of our country. They're not doing anything. And then they're mad that I'm doing something. How strong is the case against the president? And with the Supreme Court ruling against some of his recess appointments, is Mr. Obama guilty of presidential overreach? We'll talk with two House leaders, Bob Goodlatte and Javier Becerra. Then, a suspect in the Benghazi terror attack is now in federal custody outside Washington. And ISIS continues its advance in Iraq as pressure mounts on the embattled government in Baghdad. In the end, the Iraqis are responsible for their defense, and nobody expected wholesale desertion. We'll talk with former CIA and NSA director Michael Hayden who says as a country, Iraq has already ceased to exist. Plus, the Tea Party is dealt a blow in Mississippi. Our Sunday panel offers their scorecard in this year's Tea Party versus GOP establishment matchups. And our Power Player of the Week, the collector of some of Washington's greatest treasures, pays it forward. Does it make you happy to see all of these things that you've gotten over the years? I love it. I mean, it's part of my life. All right now on Fox News Sunday. And hello again from Fox News in Washington. Republicans have long accused President Obama of exceeding the powers granted him by the Constitution. But this week, House Speaker John Boehner announced he will now move to sue the president for executive overreach. And the Supreme Court ruled nine to nothing. Mr. Obama has gone too far in making some of his recess appointments. Fox News Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel has more on what all this means for the balance of power here in Washington. What we've seen uh, clearly over the last five years is uh, an effort to erode uh, the, the power of the legislative branch. Speaker John Boehner announced Wednesday the House will sue President Obama for exceeding his constitutional authority. I believe uh, the president is not faithfully executing the laws of, of our country. And on behalf of the institution, and our Constitution, uh, standing up uh, uh, and, and fighting for this is in the best long-term interest of the Congress. Mr. Obama has recently issued executive orders directing the Department of Labor to offer gay couples family leave, raising the minimum wage for federal contractors, stopping deportations of children here illegally, and more than two dozen unilateral changes to Obamacare. I'm not sure which of the things I've done they find most offensive, but they've decided they're going to sue me for doing my job. Then Thursday, in a unanimous opinion, the Supreme Court said President Obama exceeded the limits of his executive power when he decided back in January 2012 to bypass the Senate and name three new members to the National Labor Relations Board. Writing for the court, Justice Stephen Breyer found that mechanism enough to keep the president at bay. Quote, we hold that for purposes of the recess appointments clause, the Senate is in session when it says it is, provided that under its own rules, it retains the capacity to transact Senate business. The Senate met that standard here. Boehner called that a victory for the Constitution and against President Obama's aggressive overreach. That sets the stage for the House to vote in July to move forward with a lawsuit. Chris? Mike, thanks for that. We've invited two congressional leaders to debate these issues which go to the core of our Constitution. From Virginia, the Republican chair of the House Judiciary Committee, Bob Goodlatte. And here in Washington, the head of the House Democratic Caucus, Javier Becerra. Gentlemen, President Obama dismissed the threat of a lawsuit this week saying that House Speaker Boehner and Republicans want to sue him for doing his job. Here's what he had to say. My message to Republicans is join us, get on board. If you're mad at me for helping people on my own, then why don't you join me and we'll do it together. We'll do it together. I'm happy to share the credit. Chairman Goodlatte, the president says it's all politics, a stunt, he calls it. Absolutely not, Chris. This is uh, all about the United States Constitution. Article 1 says the president of the United States, uh, I'm sorry, the Congress, uh, is the legislative body. All uh, legislative powers herein granted shall rest in a Congress of the United States. Article 2 says the president shall faithfully execute the laws. So it's not about 
our wanting uh, uh, to stop him from doing his job. It's our wanting to do the job that the Constitution <clears throat> prescribes and not to take powers resting in the Congress and to, through uh, not enforcing laws or changing laws that have been passed, uh, taking power from the legislative branch. It's very important, and this should be bipartisan, people standing up to protect the balance of power, the check against uh, a too powerful executive branch. It's been done in the past. It needs to be done again. Let me put up a few of the unilateral, and this is just a few of the unilateral actions President Obama has taken in recent years. Take a look at this list. February 2011, ordered the Justice Department to stop defending the Defense of Marriage Act. June 2012, declared deportation of some illegal immigrants, uh, deferred, rather, deportation of some illegal immigrants. February 2014, raised the minimum wage for federal contractors and over the years repeatedly made dozens of changes to Obamacare. Congressman Becerra, what is the president's legal authority to take all of these unilateral actions without going back to Congress? Well, Chris, first, the list that you showed are all things that the American public wants to see. And the president is simply saying, Congress, if you're not going to do your job of actually passing the laws that make those things happen, but the I'm going to but use... Wait a minute, Congressman. Let me Sarah, finish. The Constitution does... Wait, wait. The Constitution, the the Constitution by, does not if say, hey, thought, if it's popular, you can exceed your authority. My thought, it's kind the, of irrelevant. The president simply said, I'm going to do what I can within the confines of the law to make this work. So the minimum wage increase isn't for all Americans. It's only for federal people who work for what federal contractors. What is his legal authority to take this action without going back to Congress? The the president has the authority as the executive to implement the laws. If there is a law that says that we will pay a federal contractor money, the president can say, okay, federal contractors, you can't gouge your workers because you're getting taxpayer money to do the work. And so therefore, the president can say, at least pay them the federal minimum wage. But is he implementing the law? Absolutely, he's implementing the law. Or, the is, law he, or is he rewriting the law? No, he's not rewriting it because he's simply implementing it. He's, he is only doing it where he has the power, powers as the executive for the federal government. He hasn't set a minimum wage for everyone who works for private sector. That would require Congress. And they so when he's doing to it where the he has the minimum wage, power. he's raised Chris, the minimum wage. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Chairman Goodlatte. Well, I just want to say that these are people who are working in the private sector, and the fact that their uh, employer has entered into a contract to provide uh, services to the government, but they also may do business with a whole host of other things, doesn't give him, under the law, the power to contract with them and to add uh, a multitude of different conditions, including sure what they have to pay their employees. Yeah, sure it no, does, it Bob. You know that. It, th those contractors don't have a right to get taxpayer money. They enter into a contract with the federal government. They know the terms but of the contract. But they were already getting they the federal minimum wage. To provide services he, he not to let the, the government wage. micromanage their business. And he said, if you're going to want to work for the federal government, get a contract from the federal government, you're going to have to pay this minimum I, wage. I'm still not There's sure. nothing wrong with that. The, you don't have to contract with the federal government. That I, that, that's not really the issue. The issue is what gives... And let's not take that case. Let's take all of the things that he's done on Obamacare. Congress wrote a law. What gives him the legal authority to rewrite the law? Because you, uh, as the executive, have the authority and the obligation to make sure laws work, that they, you act responsibly. You're, if you're going to cross the street, By just because judgment? you see a green Don't light doesn't mean you cross the street. You look both ways before you cross Chris, the street. That's what the president is doing. He's saying, Chris, we're going to implement this law, but we want to make sure it works Go ahead, properly. Congressman. Good lap. Chris, if I may, the law, the Obamacare, one of the things the president did, the law says you have fewer than 50 employees. You don't have to comply with uh, the employer mandate in Obamacare. So the president now says, well, if you have between 50 and 100 employees, you don't have to comply. But if you have more than 100 employees, you do. Where does it say in Obamacare that he has the authority to make that legislative decision? Well, he Bob, doesn't. He needs to go wrong. back to the Congress let, if let he me, wants let, to make let changes me, I, like I that. Move a, I, I, I think we've kind of explored this. We certainly but, haven't but Bob settled it. Bob misinterpreted what I, the I, president did there. I, I, he didn't I, say you don't have to uh, abide by the law. He said we're going to defer implementation until we're ready to go on that aspect. And this, that's what small businesses were asking for. He's done this let about us be two ready. dozen times. But I, he wants uh, to make sure small businesses Goodlatte, are ready. The courts have, as a rule, dismissed these cases, saying that Congress doesn't have legal standing and, in fact, that there are other remedies at Congress's disposal. You could cut funding for the executive branch of the various programs. Ultimately, you could impeach the president. Uh, Chairman Goodlatte, how do you answer that question, that you have other remedies? And, and, and secondly, even if you go forward, and even if the courts accept this suit, by the time it gets all the way through all of the legal machinations, Barack Obama will be out of office. 
Well, first of all, with regard to the powers that the Constitution provides the Congress in its system of checks and balances, there are several. We have the power of legislation, the power of the purse. Uh, we have uh, uh, in the Senate the power to confirm appointments, which was what the Supreme Court decision uh, was all about. We have the power of oversight, holding hearings. But we also have the power to bring causes of action when we believe that the President of the United States is exceeding his authority and is trampling upon Article I of the Constitution, powers granted to the Congress. So uh, to me, it makes a, a whole lot of sense to do this, and it's not the first time the court's been asked to do it. We have a case pending right now. Uh, and the, what about uh, the argument that by the time where this the gets General settled, Barack Obama will no longer be president, sir? Correct. Well, that's why we passed a, a law through the House, and I'm proud to say five Democrats joined with all the Republicans to say, yes, uh, we should make it uh, easier for this process to take place so that the court would hear a case when a majority of either the House or Senate or both uh, elect to bring a case and would do it in an expedited fashion with a three-judge panel and then an immediate appeal to the Supreme Court, which could be resolved in six or seven months. Of course, Still of course time, that hasn't gotten through enough the, time the to Senate. preserve the I have to move powers. along, sir. We're, 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 we're running out of time. Uh, meanwhile, there was another big development this week, and that is that the Supreme Court ruled unanimously, nine to nothing, that the president violated the Constitution when he made appointments to the National Labor Relations Board while the Senate was on brief breaks in its work. Here is Republican Senator Mike Lee reacting to the court's decision. The court said the president doesn't have the power to decide when the Senate's in session. Only the Senate can decide that. And when the Senate decides that it's not in recess, the president may not issue a recess appointment. Congre Congressman Becerra, nine to nothing in the Supreme Court. Isn't this another clear case of presidential overreach? Look, when you face a Republican majority in the, in the House that is playing this game of shutdown politics, Blocking everything the president wants this to do, to do with including the House. including confirmation of uh, the, that, they, judges and of agency the House heads. Does not confirm. I understand. I said, but in the case of the House, for example, the House decided I, I, I'm to asking litigate. asking a specific question: the nine to nothing decision by the Supreme Court on making recess appointments when the court said, and it was a liberal justice, Stephen Breyer, who wrote the unanimous decision when the court said the Senate wasn't in session. Isn't this presidential overreach? What the president did. What presidents have done since the time of horse and buggy, Republicans and Democrats alike, is use the power to appoint to go out there and do that. During the recess, when the president did these appointments, the question was, did he have the power? Was Congress in recess? Okay, the, the judges have clarified that. That's fine. That doesn't stop the, the fact that Republicans have used this shutdown politics to try to keep the president from being able to enforce the law and govern by denying him his nominations for judges and for heads of agencies. The president said it already. He's going to act if Congress won't. Congress had the ability to act to change the law Chris, that Chris, denied and, gays and, and, gentlemen, marriage. Gentlemen, I, I got one more thing I want to ask. If I could just conclude, I wanna, but, but if I could just me, conclude no, the last point. I've got point. one more thing I want to ask if you I about. Just, but, no, no, Chris, I, 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 the point excuse on gay, me, excuse me, Congressman. I'm going to ask another question. All right. The Supreme Court, because we're running out of time here, the Supreme Court is expected to announce tomorrow its decision on the Hobby lobby case, and that is a question as to whether or not, uh, under Obamacare, the president can mandate a private company to provide birth control coverage to its workers if that's in violation of the owner's religious beliefs. Uh, let me begin with you, Congressman Goodlatte, and I'm going to ask you each to take about 30 seconds to answer this. What uh, do you think is at stake here in terms of executive powers, and how do you expect the court to rule in the Hobby Lobby? Well, in that case, I think the statute itself, as interpreted by the president, uh, violates the First Amendment of the Constitution. I'm hoping the court will uphold the rights of uh, individuals for uh, their uh, expression of their religious uh, uh, freedoms. Now, uh, the end does not justify the means in these cases, and the 9-0 decision uh, last week was the 13th time the Supreme Court has voted nine to nothing that the president has exceeded his constitutional authority. Let, let me interrupt you and uh, go to Congressman Becerra briefly, 30 seconds. If I own a company and I have strong religious beliefs, the government can tell me I have to violate those beliefs in terms of providing birth control coverage to my employees? The, the government will not violate anyone's uh, religious beliefs 
but no one has the right to discriminate against a woman because of her own beliefs. And I believe that the Supreme Court will find that no business, no business should be allowed to discriminate against women. And we've gone beyond that. We should also try to pay them equally for the work that they do that's equal to what a man does. We're talking about birth well, but let's mandate. protect a woman's rights to be able to earn the same pay, to be able and to about, live her life. And what about life. the owner's right to his religious freedom, his religious beliefs? The owner has a right to his or her religious beliefs, but that doesn't mean you get to discriminate against women if women have different beliefs than what the owner has, and the woman wants to exercise her rights under the Constitution. Congressman Becerra, Congressman Goodlatte, sorry for the, all the interruptions. I, it was like herding cats today. Thank you both. Thanks for joining us. Thank Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Is Thank President you, Obama out of line with his executive orders and recess appointments? Our Sunday panel weighs in next. Plus, what would you like to ask the panel? Just go to Facebook or Twitter at Fox News Sunday, and we may use your question on the air.